Hey, this is Dan Pellinchar. I'm a solutions consultant with School of Sheets and we build customized smart sheet solutions. I'm here to demonstrate our Gantt chart project tracking system. So let's get right into it. What you're looking at here is a dashboard and it provides links to relevant smart sheet tools and it also can provide links to external items. Say if you have other softwares that you need to reference or if you have uh, cloud-based file storage systems like Google Drive or Box, we can put those links in here as well. There are some metrics and data about your project that automatically update in real time, and there are a number of reports that provide uh, various pre-filtered views, and we'll go into each of these in detail. So the first thing I want to show you is the project tracker sheet. So let's go ahead and open this up. And now this is your source data for your project. Think of it as the foundation of a house. Everything in the system that you're going to see, it's built off of this sheet. Um, but like a foundation of a house, you don't necessarily go into it and see it directly. Rather, you access different reports and uh, filtered views that let you modify the data, but in a protected way. Uh, generally speaking, anything in Smartsheet, if you're using a report, or sorry, if you're using a sheet and this is a sheet, your data is vulnerable to deletion where these reports are much more protected. However, I do want to take you through this a little bit in the sheet level view. So I'm going to collapse everything here and kind of unpeel it. So starting at this level, this is your full project, okay? So we open this up and we can see each of the phases. This guy should be indented. So we can see that there are four phases in this particular project. Uh, the first phase is fully completed, and you can see the stat current status and the uh, overall status, this blue symbol right here, that reflects the uh, description of the phase. In the second phase, no tasks are at risk, so it's currently in progress. Phase three, at least one task is at risk, so again, we can see it's got the red symbol. Phase four, starting in the future. So if we open up phase one, we can see there's this bucket of tasks, and they're all completed, hence the blue symbols, and we're good on this one. Pretty self-explanatory. Phase two, there are no tasks in, at risk, so everything here is in progress. Um, however, you can see there's two different possibilities for an in-progress task or bucket. It can either be in progress and on track, or in progress and delayed. So if we open up this bucket here, you can see there are four completed tasks, but there is one still in progress, so this particular bucket is still going to be marked as in progress. Only once it is uh, the last task is completed will the parent row here change. So I'm going to change that back to it was what in progress and on track. Okay, and now down here, everything is in progress, completed, or upcoming, but this guy here is delayed. And I'll also show you that if you have one, let's say this one is in progress and on, on actually it makes more sense. This one is in progress and on track. The overall um, status for the parent is gonna be the delay because obviously you wanna get the visibility into the most pertinent information and that's always gonna be what's the most problematic item. <clears throat> now moving on to the next phase here, we have several situations where overall there's at least one task at risk within this entire phase. So in our first bucket, everything is in progress and on track, or it's upcoming, so no issues there. In the second bucket, here is our task that's at risk, so this shading occurs automatically. It's very easy to see. You can identify problems right, right off the bat. Then you can address it, and you can see everything changes to the nice happy green color. And lastly, there's just this other bucket here. So again, the phases, any parent row is automatically gonna reflect the most problematic child. And lastly, we have a bucket where everything is starting in the future. You get the yellow symbol. It's on your plate, no need to worry about it right now. Now, one thing I want to show you is there's some automatic updating of this sheet at the uh, product metric level. So look here, we have 12 out of 35 tasks, 34.3% complete. 
and we can probably actually let's make that change okay that's better 34.3 percent complete one task at risk so so watch here I'm gonna change this to in progress and on track now the metrics are updating 11 out of 35 tasks 10 out of 35 etc and the percent complete is changing this is two tasks at risk now three tasks at risk etc so and this goes right on your dashboard so this gives you very quick visibility into the overall status of your project and if you have maybe you have five ten a hundred products all at once um, something that can be done is you can just get this one basically summary row put on your dashboard so you can see for all your projects really at a glance what's the overall status what do I need to worry about okay um, and lastly some other things that are being tracked here uh, every task is assigned to an individual you can pre assign a percent effort and this gives you a resource view where you can see the percent allocation of a certain individual over time and this is me and I guess January of 2025 is going to be a rough month for me or maybe February is even worse but now so in the real world you come in here and you say wow this particular person is way over their appropriate effort level we have to somehow reduce their workload get somebody to help them uh, we also have a task update and you can just type into this I'll show you that later and there's also target start and target end date these are probably put in by a product manager and then the employees can modify their actual start date and actual end date and then you can track uh, when things are getting done how much time is taking different people etc and over here this is the back end nobody needs to see it it controls all the automation oh, oops. controls all the automation that you see happening so let's save that go back to our dashboard and get into some of the nitty-gritty here so I want to take you through some of these reports and so you just saw the foundational foundation of the house master sheet which has all the source data each of these reports on the dashboard are pulling information from that sheet, but it's filtering it automatically based on how the report is set up. So this first report, it's only going to show you rows that have a green or a red status symbol. So this is a situation where if you're somebody that's responsible for managing the project or doing the work, you're concerned with what's neat, what needs to be uh, done currently and what the problems are. So uh, I can come in here and I can modify this. So this says task update completed this task, but this isn't actually marked as completed. So perhaps I should come in here and make these changes, <clears throat> refresh the page and save it. Make sure you do that every time. And those items fall off this report. They still exist in the master sheet and other relevant reports, but they don't need to be seen here because they're not red or green. Here's another completed item, so let's just update this guy nicely. Refresh the report. Again, the metrics here are updating automatically. We went from 12 to 13. And here, okay, late delivery from vendor. Maybe uh, received delivery from vendor to 20. And maybe I can modify this. Now it's on track and perhaps I started it today now so again really easy to use a lot of just clicking the cell typing stuff in selecting dates a lot of it's already done for you so very user-friendly let's go back to the dashboard try a different view now let's check out the upcoming tasks so this is a report where it's only going to show you tasks that are starting in the future you can look at the and it's based off the target start date so these are all in 2025 just so this remains relevant for several years it also includes the at-risk ones so long as they are starting in the future so maybe while planning this project you realize that for this particular task it's not started yet but there's already something wrong with it for some reason it can't become started so you just want to make a note of that so if you're again maybe for the project manager or you're in the leadership and you're thinking about okay what's on our plate next week or just overall in the future this is a good view for you to do some planning and lastly 
you can open this report here, get the full project details. It shows you everything. Um, it's basically the same thing as the source sheet. However, again, this is protected as far as the data. So um, anything with a formula in it, for example, these statuses, you can't override them. These rows in purple, they're locked. Since I'm an admin, I can actually edit them, but if you have an employee and you don't want them basically changing your target start and end dates, um, these would not be able to be changed should that if that person was not an admin. Um, and again, you can just see the entire project right here. So that is the conclusion of this demonstration. If you're interested in this type of system or any other Smartsheet solution, uh, we customize everything based on your needs the colors, the different types of charts here. We can get circle charts and all sorts of data tracking, more metrics. You can get different reports specific for you. Uh, one thing I can actually show you that's pretty cool is, which would be a good one to do it on. So for example, in this upcoming task, there's a, a several items here that have my name in it. So we can make you a report that only shows you the task that you're responsible for. So my contact information is in the uh, responsible column, the responsible cell for every single one of the items shown here. So there is a lot of flexibility and possibilities as far as what your solution can consist of. So if you're interested, uh, please email us at schoolofsheets at gmail.com. There's also a form that you can fill out on the view that you'll see, that you'll be seeing. So just fill out that form with your information and let us know that you might be having a, an issue you'd like some help with or you want to get started with Smartsheet. No matter where you are, if you've never used Smartsheet before and you want to get started, if you use it a little bit but you need to get some help getting your system up and running, or if you have you know, a, a solid system and you just want to upgrade it, get some more advanced features, we can definitely help you out regardless of your situation. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and please feel free to reach out. Have a great day. Thanks.